In this video, we'll be discussing about articulators, the process of articulation, and the method that we will be adopting for articulation in our laboratory. Now, what is an articulator? An articulator is a mechanical hinge device used in dentistry which, to which plaster casts of the maxillary and mandibular jaw are fixed, which reproduces some or all of the movements of the mandible in relation to the maxilla. Remember, we can't perform all the procedures in a patient. So for certain procedures, we need to use the laboratory. And if we want to use the laboratory, then we need to make sure that the appliances or apparatus that we are going to use mimics some or all of the movements that the patient's mandible is producing. So for this, different types of articulators have been described. The first simple articulator is a plain line articulator. This is a simple hinged movement articulator. It has, it's only a hinge movement articulator. The other movement that can be performed is basically sidewise movement, but these are not the exact accurate movements. Remember, whenever you're using a plain line articulator for a simple single tooth replacement in a denture, yes, this articulator can help. For diagnostic purposes, yes, this articulator can help. But for further complex procedures, uh, this articulator is inadequate. But the requirements for a, for a plain line articulator is that you need to have a screw at the end also, which maintains the separation between the maxilla and the mandible. So always make sure that this screw is touching the, upper, the top of the articulator. The second articulator is a semi-adjustable articulator. This semi-adjustable articulator is the way we say it, it's semi-adjustable is because it can perform lateral movements, it can perform certain protrusive movements and also hinge-like movements. But it cannot perform all the movements performed by the mandible, so that is why it's not a fully adjustable articulator. The other category of this articulator is that this is a non-archon articulator. Why do I say that it's a non-archon articulator? The reason is that if you recall the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint, the condyle is on the mandible and the glenoid fossa is with the temporal bone. Now in this case, in a non-archon articulator, the condyle over here, if you can see inside, this is the condyle. It is attached with the upper member and the lower member does not have the condyle. So it's sort of a reverse of the temporomandibular joint anatomy. Similarly, the glenoid fossa or over here, the condylar element, the assembly here, or the slot you can see inside, this is attached with the lower part. And if I unscrew this and I can move this, so the condyle is rotating sidewise, but similarly, the maxillary member is moving, which is not possible in the, in the real anatomy. So this is a semi-adjustable non-archon articulator. A similar example of a non-archon articulator is the, the true version, which is the dentatus articulator. This is also called the Hanau's articulator. This is the dentatus articulator. This is the original dentatus articulator, but this is also a non-archon articulator. It has the same upper member having attached the condylar ball. The condylar element is attached to the mandibular or the lower part. The next articulator which is, is an archon articulator. The archon articulator with the word archon, the two syllables, A R R con C O N con. R for articulator, con for condyle. So this means that this is following the same anatomy as the patient's anatomy of the temporomandibular joint. The condyle is attached with the lower member and the condyle assembly or the glenoid fossa mimicking the glenoid fossa is attached with the upper member. So this is a, a 
This is also a semi adjustable articulator, but this has is this is called as an Archon articulator. Certain movements can be performed more easily in an Archon articulator than a non Archon articulator. We won't be discussing that in this video at the moment. The only difference is that in a non in an Archon articulator, we also have the facility of opening up the upper member quite easily and this is how we can replace this. As you can see the condyles are attached in the lower member and the glenoid fossa if you, if you are able to see it is present in the upper member which mimics the same as the temporomandibular joint anatomy. So, I will replace it back here. There are locks here and it becomes present here. So, this is all about a brief introduction about articulators. Now, we will be discussing the procedure of performing the method of the articulation for the semi adjustable articulator on this model.